So today I'm going to be reviewing one of my favorite perfumes, if not my most favorite of all time, called Le Du Temps by Nina Ricci. And I have a sample, actually. It's one of the first samples that I bought of any perfume. It's very, very tiny. You can see. It's a lightly fluted glass uh, container with this interesting little cap. It's made of plastic of two doves in mid-flight. This perfume is known for having quite a long and interesting history. It was released originally in 1948, so almost directly after World War II. And it was kind of inspired by Nina Ricci's son, Robert, who had, a, unsurprisingly, a passion for perfumes, like his mother. And it does have a very prominent place in the post-war period, but I'll go into that a bit later. Right now, I'll go into the notes. As you can see, the liquid itself is a very light wheat yellow. Not quite golden, but it does have a very light golden hue. And when I take off the cap here, it's pretty easy to take off, it's just plastic. And I'll put some on my wrist. When I first tried this perfume, I just immediately adored it. So, and unfortunately I don't have very much left in this bottle, but the top notes it, the whole perfume is very, very soothing. The top notes are mainly floral and consist of carnation, aldehydes, rose, neroli, Brazilian rosewood, peach, and bergamot. So, overall, it's light, but not too light. There is a certain warmth that you get right away, which is my favorite part. The perfume gives me the feeling of it's something warm, like a bath oil or, or getting into a warm bath, something uh, kind of cozy. And a lot of floral perfumes don't do that. They're usually very light, sometimes even cold. So this is a very, very unique floral perfume. And I imagine the warmth comes from the Brazilian rosewood in the top notes, so you get a certain warmth and woodiness right away. Uh, without it being too woody, initially. The middle notes are even more floral, more carnation, cloves, gardenia, jasmine, ylang lang, rose, violet, orris root, rosemary, and orchid. So lots of florals. And it, while this is a floral perfume, and while there are many floral notes, I wouldn't necessarily say it's overwhelmingly floral. And I wouldn't say it's very sweet either. I, I wouldn't say that this is sweet much at all. Um, it's more of a balance between light and rich. But there's certainly no sugary notes. There's no cloying sweetness. And the base notes are spices, iris, oak moss, musk, sandalwood, amber, vetiver, and cedar. I think the balance between the woody notes and the floral notes is pretty much what gives this perfume its entire profile. And even though there's not too many woody notes in comparison to the floral notes, I would say that those few woody notes really kind of en enrapture the entire perfume and give it... It's a very unique smell. The only, the main thing that I would consider it to be similar to is maybe Chanel Number no. 5, but Chanel Number no. 5 is more musky. It has that civet note, which this one does not have, which I enjoy because the main thing that I don't like about Chanel Number no. 5 is that it becomes very civet-y as it dries over the hours. This one, uh, the L'Air du Temps, uh, doesn't have too much musk. It's the right amount of musk, I would say. 
so not too strong and not too light either. A lot of people think that floral perfumes are always too light and it will just disappear into the air. But this one is very grounded, which I like. It's, it's, it is a lot like some sort of really rich oil. That's what it reminds me of. There's an oiliness to it, like a luxurious oiliness. And you don't get that in a lot of perfumes. And the longevity. This is an Eau de Parfum, so it is naturally stronger. I'm not, I'm not sure if there's an Eau de Toilette for this particular perfume, but I know that the longevity is relatively long, not super long. I imagine six to eight hours. Uh, I personally find that it fades around maybe five hours, but that could be because I'm not using enough. There's that much to use in here, but the Sillage, I would say it's surprisingly um, a full-bodied perfume that really kind of emanates into the air, which I quite like. I, I can't stand perfumes, you put it on and it just disappears as, as soon as you put it on. This perfume, people can tell that you're wearing it. Um, it's it's in the air, especially if you put a lot on, it'll, it'll fill the room but not be overpowering at the same time because it, it, it is a very balanced and harmonious perfume. And it's mainly uh, a, a female perfume. Even, I mean, perfume and fragrances in general don't really have any gender, but I think this would probably appeal more to women. And originally it was marketed towards women. So this perfume has an interesting story. Even the doves on the on the cap here have a story. So, it came out in 1948, post-war. A lot of people think, oh, 1948 is already quite a few years after the war has ended in 1945, so you'd think everything should be back to normal by then. But in reality, the world was not quite back to normal yet, not for at least a few more years. People were still rebuilding, things were still trying to get back to normal, the economy was still still kind of to put itself back together again. And the big thing with this perfume is that it kind of symbolize well the doves themselves on the cap symbolize this peace and and you know freedom from the war. But this particular perfume was marketed as a very, very uh, feminine fragrance for the reason that during the war, most or a lot of women were working in factories and, you know, they had their hands calloused, they were just kind of all roughed up from, the, you know, working in the factories all day. And after the war, women finally had a chance to stop working in the factories. And a lot of them were very, very glad to do so, to stop working in those factories, uh, because they just had awful conditions, just overheated, just overworked. And after the war, they had the chance to kind of go back to their lives that they had before the war. And this perfume, the L'Air du Temps, really gave them a chance to re-embrace their femininity, to put aside the really tough work from the factories and just kind of relax, kind of there's some peace, you know, so they could just relax for the most part and embrace the luxuries that they were not able to during the war because obviously during the war there was so much rationing that luxuries or even the simplest everyday things um, like food were not attainable. So this perfume was kind of a, a turning point in 1948. Things were finally starting to come back to normal by the end of the 1940s and into the 50s, and people were getting their lives back on track. And this perfume has remained quite popular ever since then. One thing that I quite like in particular is that it was mentioned by Hannibal Lecter in Silence of the Lambs. He says to Clary Starling, who visits him in, in his cell in a mental institution, he says to her, something along the lines of sometimes you wear l'air du temps but not today which I think is a nice line and the popularity of this perfume has persisted 
uh, even until today. Of course, it's not as popular as it was when it first came out, when it really was something special and kind of a, a milestone. But I would say this is a very timeless perfume, mainly just because it, there's nothing that I think anyone would find offensive in it. There's no extremely strong smells of civet or extremely strong smells of smoke or anything like that. It's a relatively... The main thing is that it's a very warm uh, floral perfume. So I think it would appeal to most people. Of course, there are some people who don't like it uh, for whatever reason. They might not like all the blend of the, the floral notes, but overall I think... I, I love this perfume. I could wear it every day if, if only my little sample was a bit larger, but uh, other than that, I just, I like, if I could rate it, I would put 10 out of 10. I think it's a great perfume. So other than that, I think that's pretty much it for this particular perfume with the very interesting post-war history. So if you enjoyed this video, leave a like down below, possibly subscribe. And I usually put out new videos every Tuesday or Thursday, although sometimes on Saturday. So stay tuned for those.